time, story time. Aren't we corny, the unicorn? Yes, we are. And I love gymnastics. Me too. Whoa. Uh, was that Pink Bear? Whoa. Well, uh, what are you guys doing? Whoa. Obviously, we're practicing for the Olympics with our gymnastics routines. Can't you tell? Uh, yes. Well, let's start with a book. I love gymnastics. Oh, uh, you do, Maleficent? Yes. Especially when they fall. <laughs> oh, that's me. Oh. Well, falling does happen, but gymnastics is extremely hard. But it's worth it for that gold medal, isn't it? Now, let's find out all about gymnastics and the girl who smiled. Who is this girl you say? She's not on the gymnastics I'm watching. No, she's not. But she changed the sport forever back in 1972. The 1972 Olympic Games were about to start. One of the girls on the Soviet Union's gymnastics team got hurt. Olga Korbut, this girl right here, was chosen to take the injured girl's place. Olga was 17, but she looked much younger. She was only 4 foot 11, so she looked like a little girl. Now, no one had ever heard of Olga. No one expected her to win a medal, but she did. In fact, Olga Korbut won a total of four medals at the Munich Olympics, three gold and one silver. And, like I said, she changed the sport of gymnastics forever. Yeah? How? Well, at the time, women's gymnastics were more like ballet or some other kind of dancing. Oh, not, not, not athletic and fast-paced like now? No, not at all. The gymnasts performed their routine slowly and gracefully, and most of them wore serious expressions on their faces. Oh, like this? Uh, a little bit. Hey, do you mind moving over so I can finish reading, Pink Bear? Oh, yeah. Sorry about that, kid. <laughs> well, Olga, however, was quick, and she was lively. She wasn't serious. She amazed the crowds and the other gymnasts with her daring moves. And look at her big smile right there. Now, all the gymnasts smile, don't they? Isn't it crazy to think that they used to be super serious? Well, Olga was the very first person to do a backflip on the balance beam. And she was the first gymnast to smile at the audience while she performed. Oh, that's pretty bosh. Backflip on the balance beam? Whoa. Millions of people watched Olga on television. They liked her energy, her happy, friendly personality, and boys and girls who were watching decided they wanted to become gymnasts too because of what she was doing. So, within the next few years, many more gymnastics clubs and training centers were open suddenly to teach them. And suddenly, gymnastics was one of the most popular sports in the world. And all because of the girl who smiled. Wow! You keep working on that routine, Pink Bear. Now, long, long ago, the sports of gymnastics is more than 2,000 years old. It was invented by the people of ancient Greece, who all were sort of yellow-toned. The Greeks believed that physical exercise was an important part of health and education. Totally true, even today. They built a gymnasium in every major city so that the citizens could do their exercises regularly. Er, 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 er. That's me pumping myself up so I can hold these heavy, heavy books. The ancient Romans used gymnastics to train their soldiers and keep them ready for battle. In the Middle Ages, circus performers entertained crowds with some of the same acrobatic skills that gymnasts perform today. Now, a German school teacher named Friedrich Jahn opened the first modern gymnastics center in the early 1800s. What? He doesn't look like a gym rat at all. I know, right? But Go figure, Jan taught his students about the importance of exercise for good health. He also invented special equipment to help them, including, guess what? What, what, what did he invent? He invented the parallel bars, the pommel horse. His teachings spread all over the world and he became known as the father of modern gymnastics. I love it when they fall off the pommel horse. <laughs> Of course she does. The first modern Olympic Games were held in 1896 in Athens, Greece. Back then, only men competed in the Olympics. Gymnastics was one of the first sports to be included in the competition. Wait, 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 wait. You mean girls couldn't be in the Olympics? Not back then. Whoa, that's not right. Well, that's why it changed. Oh, that's good. I know. Because that's fair. Yeah. Because boys and girls Exactly, and then there are some boys and girls who don't like it. Yeah, <laughs> that's true too. <laughs> okay, so in 
so the events that were included were called gymnastics and they included things um, not only those performed today like the horizontal bar the parallel bar the pommel horse the rings the vault but also rope climbing rope swinging yeah! pole vaulting and uh, the bears favorite wrestling <laughs> Okay, women were not allowed to compete in gymnastics until 1928. And even then, there was only one event for women, team combined exercise. Look at it, it was closer to dancing than what we think of today's actual gymnastics. Obviously, a lot has changed since then. The apparatus, okay, these are all the events that you see, the women's vault, the balance beam, which is only four inches wide. The women's floor exercise when they run across the floor. The uneven parallel bars. Yeah, that's one of my favorites. Um, the men's vault. The pommel horse. The men's floor exercise. There's the parallel bars. He's holding on to the two bars right there. The horizontal bar and the rings. Oh man, the rings are so hard. I know. Hey, Octavius the Octopus. Even with eight arms. The ring is very hard. Boop, boop. How do you know? Oh, I know. Whoa. Oh, thank you. Okay, today, there are many gymnastics competitions, not just the Olympics. There are junior competitions for beginners, senior competitions for advanced gymnasts. There are college competitions, national competitions, international competitions, such as the Olympic Games. <laughs> The Pan American Games. Pan American Games. Yes. The Goodwill Games. Huh. Do they have songs too? Probably, but I don't know them. Hmm. Maybe I should make one up. Yeah, that'll be it. All right. Thank you, Corny. Sorry, it's getting very uh, changing of light here. Oh, we'll move on. These competitions take place in gymnasiums or arenas. Men and women, as you know from watching TV, they compete separately. Now, in any gymnastics competition, there are certain rules, and the gymnasts must perform two types of routines. Compulsory, that means that they have to do it. They don't have a choice. It's compulsory. Uh, well, yeah, that's actually correct. And optional. That's my favorite, because I like choices and I like to make my own decisions. Of course, Green Bear. A compulsory routine is assigned, and it must be performed by every gymnast in exactly the same way. But why? I don't get to show off my individuality that way. Well, that's because this type of routine gives the judges a way of directly comparing the gymnast skills. Oh, I see their point. And then in the optional routine, my favorite, yes, the gymnast gets to decide which movements to do. Sometimes a gymnast will create his or her own move, if you can imagine that, and the move is then named for the gymnast who invented it. And then other gymnasts learn the routine and add it to their own routines. Oh. Immortality! I will practice my own move now. Oh, there he goes. I'm fine. Okay. Well, moving on. I hope you can see the book okay. I keep moving it around a little bit to be in the sunshine. Now, at a women's meet, women the, the gymnasts compete in four events. The vault, where they run towards the vault horse and jump on a springboard. And the putting her hands on the horse for balance and she flips it across its width. She may do a twist, a somersault, or some other movement in the air before landing on her feet or on her butt. <laughs> Is anybody else laughing? Is it just me? Oh, well. On the uneven bars, the gymnast leaps up and grabs onto the bars. The gymnast then swings back from one bar to the other bar. And at the same time, she performs moves such as the aerials or the handstands or the splits. Well, that's exhausting just to think about. She performs the entire routine smoothly without ever stopping. The balance beam is a long beam that is only four inches wide. Four inches wide? That's small even for me! Yes, and on this apparatus, a gymnast must do cartwheels, handsprings, flips, and not fall off. That's the hard part. Now, the floor exercises where you see them running across the floor, they do a tumbling routine on a large mat and they can choose their own music and dance movements in between the flips and somersaults and tumbling moves. And then male gymnasts perform in six similar events. Some are like the women's, like they also do floor exercises, but no music or dance-like moves. Huh, I wonder why not? Men love music too. They also compete in the vault, but male gymnasts vault over the length of the horse rather than the width. 
The pommel horse looks like a lot like the vaulting horse. It gets its name from the two handles at the top right there called pommels. The gymnast supports himself by holding onto the pommels. He swings his legs in circles from side to side across the horse. Sure, it looks fun, but he's supporting his entire body on his arms. That is hard, kid. Super hard. Well, one of the most difficult events of all, though, is the rings. So difficult. Oh, I thought I would have an edge with my eight arms. Well, two wooden rings hang from these cables, as you can see, connected to the ceiling. They're eight feet above the floor. Eight feet! And the gymnast leaps up and grabs rings and keeps them as still as possible moves and makes all these amazing moves. Now, one of the newer events that you're going to be seeing in the Olympics is rhythmic gymnastics. That was only been, that's only been around since 1984. And women gymnasts perform short routines set to music. The routines are done on the floor mat and involve ribbons, hoops, balls, clubs, or ropes. Look at that! Ribbon, ball, clubs, and check this out, trampoline gymnastics. That appeared for the first time at the 2000 Olympics in Sydney, Australia. Now, the final thing that you should know about this book, if you're seriously interested in pursuing a gymnastics career, I totally am interested. I don't know how much my actual talent will help me, but I really want to know more. Okay, well, Pink Bear, gymnastics is, as you already pointed out, not an easy sport. It takes years of practice and hard work to become a, a gymnast. Many gymnasts move far away from their families to work with special coaches at professional training centers. And to be in good shape, they have to eat, caref eat carefully healthy foods. They have to get enough rest. The gymnastic moves are dangerous, and sometimes athletes get hurt. Uh, I'm alright. I'm alright. I'm still recovering from the Green Bear Innovative Exercise. I'll, I'll be fine. I'll be fine. Uh, okay, okay, Green Bear. Well, there's no guarantee that anybody will win a medal for every all their hard work. But when a gymnast feels the thrill of victory, it's all worthwhile. And that is almost everything you need to know to get started with your new career as an Olympic gymnast. Good luck, kid, with all your dreams. May they all be Olympic and gold medal winning. And if you fall down, if you hear anybody laughing, you know it's me. <laughs> Oh boy. See you next time, kid. See you next time, kid, on Kid Time Story Time.